G'day guys, welcome back. I've got a big one today, big canvas. This is a 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter or 12 by 24 inches. And I'm gonna do five flip cups. So that's today. And I will, I will show you my little cheat sheet in a minute. But before I do that, I'll show you a couple of my ring paws that I did last week. So dried beautifully. That's them there. That's the first one I did. Really like that blue. It's kind of got a blue corner and then a red corner. So that's that one. And then I did this one. I don't know which way you'd put it. So got these beautiful fingerlings here. It reminded me of the, the fire encroaching on a on a water hole <laughs> with all those bushfires we've been having recently. So that's that's that one. Dried beautifully again. So those are those two. Righto. Let's get started. <clears throat> I'll show you my little cheat sheet, as I call it. This is what I give my students when they come to my workshops. They each got a little card to take home so as you can see there 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter canvas we need 900 grams of mixed paint just divide that by 30 and that'll give you the ounces um, so yeah that's it Our glue 60 percent water 40 percent and one part pouring medium to one part paint so that is it <clears throat> I added two whites and two navies got a light brown a dark brown and then this pale blue so the dark brown here is burnt umber i'm using all the montmartre studio paints today i'm not going to get them all down because they're big bottles these two navies are phthalo blue with um, just a little tiny blob of green and a little bit of black this can throw purple, so the green counteracts the purple and makes a nice navy. Uh, again, with the green, it is just, um, what's it called, sap green with a touch of black. This one is raw sienna. And this one is turquoise with a little bit of blue and a lot of white just to make it a sort of a light bluish colour. So that's those. Righto, let's get started. I've got my five cups. Gee, it's been a while since I've done a five flip cup pour, isn't it? I've been doing the smaller canvases, but I thought, nah, 2020, I need to start doing a bigger canvas for you guys. So it's been a while, got my corner catcher, got my little tool. That's my pouring medium bottle. I mix it up in there. Righto, I've sprayed my cups with some silicone spray just so that the paint will fall out of them more easily. Spot on treadmill silicone. So two drops in each, just twist the nozzle, don't try and take the nozzle off, just twist it, don't squeeze the bottle, just let them drip out, you squeeze the bottle you're going to get like 20 drops at once, so just let two drop out, we'll skip the white because it's our opaque, um, that light blue is probably now an opaque because it's got so much white in it. This one, because I've lightened it with white, so it's probably almost an opaque. The others are all semi-transparent. The Montmartre paint, they actually don't have any transparency apart from their fluoros, which I don't use anyway. So they're all either semi-transparent or there's a few that are um, opaque, which is the black and the white. That's are uh, opaque. Um, there are a couple more that are opaque. I've got them written down somewhere. But uh, hopefully the new bottles that Montmartre release are going to have the opacity written on the bottles. So if it's got an empty circle, it's transparent. If it's got a half coloured in circle, it's semi-transparent. And if it's a full coloured circle, then it will be an opaque colour. So let's just... Oh, I'm not going to have very much paint <laughs> to spread around. That's the only problem with having five cups. Your one cup has to go a long way. Now I'll try and be quick here with my layering. 
if you put your cups nice and close to each other, you can just go straight from one to the other. So nice beachy sorts of colours today, blues and browns, a little splash of that pale blue. And we've got the dark greeny colour as well, the teal. But basically your blues and your greens and your browns. Lovely beachy colours. Or they could actually be, um, these colours remind me of my Rocky Mountain series. I did Rocky Mountain and Rocky River. I don't know if you guys saw them. Um, where are they? Oh, here they are. Actually, I'll show you. I'll just put them there for a minute. I'll show you once I've moved the cups out of the way. I'll keep layering and then I'll show you. I'm sure you would remember them. So they were done with the global paints though, so I'm just going to have another little go in similar colours with the Montmartre paints. And see how they go. So I guess the only problem with having so many cups, <clears throat> then you're better off having fewer cups and having them a little bit fuller, which means you can get better layers. Um, I'm only putting a little squiggle in each because these cups have to do two layers. So this is the second layer. Whereas if I only had six cups, for instance, the cups would be fuller. Um, and so I'd be able to have a better layer of paint in each cup. Does that make sense to you all? But because I've got, I started with, I actually started with six cups. And I was just going to do a smaller canvas. And then I thought, oh, I really want to add two cups of white. So then I thought, well, if I'm doing two cups of white, I'm going to have to do a bigger canvas. And then if I'm doing a bigger canvas, I have to add more paint. So then I did another navy. So that's how that came about. But um, really, you're better off with fewer cups and make them a little bit fuller. And then your layers because I've got five cups here to layer, your layers will have a little bit more of each colour in them, which is a nice thing. If you have your layers too thin, you can't really see the colours as well. I'm just going to pile those up. Because a little tiny bit of paint mixed with another little tiny bit of paint, you can't really see the definition of the colour. So it's just nice to have a thicker layer. On the other hand, if your layers are too thick, then you see these big stripes of one colour, which again, you don't really want. So that's also a problem. If you put your layers too thick, uh, one of the ladies in the class, my beginner's class yesterday, I uh, don't know that she'd layered before and her first layer was like that thick and then you know there wasn't really enough left in the cup I said to everyone I only use half the paint in the first cup but it's hard you know when you when you're doing that sort of thing it's tricky to know when your half a cup is is finished um, so her first layer was very thick so when she did flip out and drag the cups you could see big straps of each color because it was so thick still turned into a really pretty painting you know once everything was tilted and blended but initially you could see these big streaks of, of color because the layers were a little bit too thick poor little end cup he's not getting much is he so i'm saying it's hard to judge how much paint you need to leave. Oops, there's a blob there. What is that? Blob of unmixed paint. We don't want that in the painting. I mustn't have mixed it properly down the bottom of the cup. All right, um, back to navy. So I'm hoping it's going to be a predominantly blue painting with a little bit of I didn't want to do too much brown because the brown can really take over. And I love navy, love navy. It's my favourite colour. I 
as you guys probably know, I've got navy and white and grey in my house. My, gray, my walls are grey, my furniture's grey, <laughs> white trim, my cushions on the couches, they're white, but then they've got um, this sort of colour with navy as well. So it's all my colours in my house. Turquoises and timber. So this light brownish colour is going to be the timber. So it'll fit nicely in my house, these colours. Oh, my first cup is always so full. All right, a little bit of brown, finish it off. Had to add a little bit of extra water to the brown. It was a bit thin, a bit thick. Um, but yeah, some of the, the white, I, I always add an extra 10 grams of paint to the white. It's a bit thin. And then some of the other colours, then I had to add a splash of water just to thin them out. All right, that's done. I'll move the cups out of the way real quick and I'll show you those other paintings that I did. Oh, look at those. Did I stir my silicone? I must have. Oh, I can't even remember anymore. I must have, didn't I? Yes. I put two drops in. Yes, I did. I stirred them all. Okay. Uh, Rocky River. This one's Rocky River because it's got more blue in it. But you can see the, the bits of brown and the white. The teal, it's got navy in it. So that's the Rocky River. And then this one is Rocky Mountains because it's got more green in it. So I thought that reminded me more of, you know, forests and, and mountains. So it's very similar colours. But, um, yeah, one's got a little bit more blue in it. One's got a little bit more green in it. So these are very similar colours, I think. Let's flip these babies over. Two, three, four, five. Woohoo! Spread them out evenly. Look at those colours. Now, I do like to just smooth my little blobs over, like so, because when I drag down, I don't want like a little blob in between my flip cups. I'd rather my flip cups just go straight over the top. Right, oh, this is nerve-wracking. It's been so long since I've done a big canvas like this. Last year, I know last year wasn't that long ago, but it was last year, because I did my series. I did, do you remember the series? I did purple, and I did green, blue, pink, turquoise, brown. <clears throat> they were on the smaller canvases. They're only like this big. And then before that, I've been doing all the blooms. I've been doing swipes ring paws, so many different things. <clears throat> so it's about time I did one of these big ones again. Righto, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's flip these cups. Mm -hmm, gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. Look at those cells popping up already. And I'm not getting my loopy bits, which is good. Looks, that one's a bit of a wobbly one, but see, I can tip some of that off. I'm just going to put a bit of the extra paint on my corners. Really not much left. I don't mind putting this extra paint on the corners because I'm going to tip it off anyway. <clears throat> but whatever you do, don't put it back through the middle. It's just going to be really muddy and stripy and... You'll be disappointed, so just don't do it. If it has to go anywhere, let it go on the sides where you're going to tip it off anyway. It's, it's quite nice having it on the corners because it helps the paint flow off the canvas. Alright, so that's it there. It's enough. As I said, those corners will probably probably go anyway. And if they don't, it's not all that 
um, of a problem, you know, if you've got some muddier, sort of stripier paint on, this, on the corners there. Righto, so these areas here are quite, quite big. They need covering, so let's do them first. Now you guys know how to get these covered, don't you? We're not going to tip straight down because the paint's just going to go like that and you're going to miss that. You need to go side to side. That paint needs to go that way. That paint needs to go that way. Um, and then I've got my corner catcher there. But let's just move the paint to the side. See how those little triangles are getting smaller now? I don't really want the paint to go off the edge just yet. I know over here it's going to go off. But let's just help it along by doing this, wetting that canvas, that'll help. Probably don't really need my corner catcher actually. We've gone over. So I mean you can use it, you don't you don't have to use them. Um, I didn't lose too much paint. If you think you're going to lose a lot of paint, then for sure use it, your corner catcher. But I, I know that I had plenty of paint made up anyway, so you lose a little bit. I think there's too much there, is there? No, oh, there's a little bit. It's not too bad. Right, now, before we tilt any further, we need to torch. Don't cover the whole thing. We need to torch now and then we walk the paint back and forth to get over the rest of the, the canvas and that's what stretches our cells out, makes them bigger. So, got my big boy, blow torch, butane. Love it. Right, let's torch. Nice and high up, don't get too close. As I always say, you can always come back and do another area but don't get too close and get big clusters coming up. Less is more, you guys, when you're doing cells. It really is. Less is more. I think it's nice to see your background. You don't want, well, I don't want a whole painting just full of cells. I, I don't think that's attractive. I like to see some background. Right, now, those cells are pretty small. I don't know why they're so small. My mix is pretty thin, well, as thin as I usually have it, but usually your cells can be a little bit bigger at this stage. Put a bit close there. See there's a cluster happening and a caterpillar because I got too close there. and then come back and torch again just a little bit to get a few more cells. But those are looking gorgeous. They are really small. I don't know why they're so small. <laughs> hmm. Just give them a minute to grow. And while I do my corners, I'll just fix these corners while those cells are, are popping up. That side's done. There's a little bit of an area there that hasn't got anything on it, so I'll just cover that. My drippings are really muddy, so I don't like to use my drippings, really. I try and pick a bit that's not too muddy and just put it on the corners. Okay. Side done, back's done, side's done, the cells are growing. So let's see what this looks like with that light shining on it, whether or not you can see the ring. No, because I've got a new light, it's a big ring light, LED ring light. That's right, I thought maybe you could see it reflecting in here, but you can't, it's, it's just up there. Righto, now... I mustn't have stirred my silicone very well because see the, see the blob? There's a blob there, there's a blob there. Did I stir my silicone? I must have. 
I'm, I probably just didn't stir it as well as I should have. All right, now we're going to stretch these cells out, which means we're going to go left and right, left and right, as we head down. Hopefully you can still see you're in frame. So don't just go straight down. Okay, make sure you go left and right, left and right. Keep that little bit of navy on the corner there if I can. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? Wipe my hands. Wow. I, um, I certainly did go minimal torching, didn't I? Now, I could, if I wanted to, stretch it out more. Um, I'll see if I can get rid of some of this. Still got that blob there. Where'd the other one go? Mm -hmm. Maybe I got rid of it. Did you guys see where it went? <laughs> Maybe. Um, so the cells here, as you can see, are quite petite, but they're quite beautiful. And they just look as if they're floating. And I've got these beautiful stripy background. Um, I, I will see if I can just take a little bit off there just to open the cells up. So what do I need to do to get this off? I need to get the weight of the paint here so that it'll go that way. There's no point having the weight of the paint up here and expecting that to go off. It won't work. So bring the paint back to where you want it to go. And hopefully, I'm just gonna take a little bit of that off. There's a little, there's a couple of little caterpillars there. So really, really slowly. And then back again. Again, slowly. There's no rush. I see people that tilt so fast and you think, oh my gosh, you're just losing all your good stuff. And then just have a little play with your composition. See over here under my thumb where I'm wiggling it. I've opened all those cells out now by getting rid of a little bit over here. So you don't have to have your lines in a straight line. <clears throat> Just going to see if I can get a little bit more off the bottom there just to kind of, I know I'm straightening my lines. I like my lines straight. <laughs> then I'm wiggling it back again. Okay, how's that? Now don't play too much. All right, don't fiddle, 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 fiddle. Because you just end up ruining it. That is, oh my gosh, that is divine, you guys. What do you think? It's, um, it's still quite green. I was thinking it was going to be so much bluer because I had the two navies in it and two whites, but, you know, you can... The white's not really very dominant, is it? Wipe that. So all I did was get that little edge off there because I had a bit of a colony of cells there, colony of cells there, and then I had that. So getting rid of that's just opened those up because you guys know me, you know that I like my cells to look like this. See how they're individual cells, they're not all bumping into each other. Sure, there are some that are touching, um, but as a whole, I prefer my cells to have space around them. So they look as if they're just floating, and I just think that's gorgeous. Oh, gee, it's trying to get paint here that's not muddy. These colours do muddy quite easily. Trying to get a bit of colour that matches, that's not too muddy. Just put your paint on and let it fall down. Don't like try and rub it in. Just let it fall down and make its own little pretty pattern. Easily run your, or gently I should say, run your little tool underneath to catch your drips and then voila we are done skis oh that is gorgeous oh, i love it it's so pretty 
I'll show you, I'll take you down and you can have a look at these gorgeous cells. There is a little bit of a, a caterpillar there where I think that was where I over torched or got a bit too close. Um, that's what happens when you get a bit too close. You get this huge amount of heat all of a sudden and for some reason you, you get that. But he's not too bad. He's quite pretty actually. He kind of looks like a fossil, one of those little fossilised creatures. Mm, I'm so tempted just to put a few little cells just, just there. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to just, just there. It's popping bubbles, really. Oh, there's quite a few of them. I wasn't planning on them being that many. I actually wanted them there. Can you just guys just move down an inch, please? You guys? Yes, you. Down. <clears throat> now, uh, the other thing I like to do after I've torched, I guess I could... No, see, I, it's hard to know when to stop, hey? I probably shouldn't have put those extra little guys on there. I, I didn't need it. Now I've got tiny cells instead of nice big cells but you can grow them you can just do this back and forth I'm actually not moving any paint off the surface I'm just moving it up and down just to grow them a little bit but yeah learn when to stop fiddling don't torch again there's something in here get off what is that a blob. Yeah, so don't do what I do. Stop fiddling. Right, let me get my gloves off and I'll take you down for a close up. And you can see what you think of this one. Um, very different to these were done with, um, I think they were global glue, which is a much thinner. See how my cells are just, well, they're a mess. They're all bumping into each other. They're not round. They're not really multicolored. This is my earlier work. I have learnt a lot and I prefer these cells. So again, big, blobby, wobbly cells all bumping into each other. Not much background at all. It's just full of cells. This I prefer tenfold. You guys might prefer the other ones though and that's fine. Everyone's different. Everyone likes something different. Let's take you down for a close-up. Now someone in my last video said can I please see your studio. Like I've shown my studio quite a few times. I'm going to stand up here on the ladder. Oh no, here we go. Right. There's some paint. Oh, there's some canvases. Some more paint. My cups. Oh, there's my canvases. Oh, up there. See, there's all my canvases up there. Puppy pedal pads. I've got my garage door insulated with um, polystyrene. Um, and then some more paints. Through that door is the laundry where I've got my sink. I can wash up more stores, more paint. Got an air conditioner going because it's hot in here today. Um, when the students' paintings are finished and they're waiting to be collected, they sit in there. Um, oh, lots of paintings. If anyone wants paintings, let me know. Got lots of paintings. Oh, there's outside. There's my little window. Get some light in. It's a bit dark in this corner. More paintings. Old paintings that I've done. And, oops, let me turn around. More paintings. Um, more storage under here. Mm. Let me climb down my ladder. So, yeah, more, more storage under here. When I've finished this painting, I'll pop it under there to dry. <clears throat> That's the table that I'm currently working on. 
And there's my big new light. My camera goes way up there. Uh, the students' work from yesterday are drying under the table there and under the table there. So they're drying. And those are those two ring pulls that I just showed you. So there you go. There's my studio. Right, back to the painting. Oh, see, now you can see that reflection of my light. Okay, that's no good. Let me turn my light off. Couldn't see it from when I was holding the camera at the top there, but now that I come around, you can see it. So let's just zoom you in. So look how pretty she is. The colours have blended so nicely. And it certainly is... Well, it is, it is blue um, because I've got the two navy cups through there. So I've got that gorgeous navy stripe there. There's those little baby cells that popped up. Naughty. Smack my hand. Do not torch again. I knew I shouldn't. Now there's that little caterpillar. He's not too bad though, is he? He's quite cute. And that's the oh, raw sienna, that sort of brownish, well, it kind of looks orange through here, but it's brown raw sienna. A few more little baby cells. So basically greens and blues and browns. Got some really pretty cells there with the white around them. I don't know why my mix it did seem a little bit thick, didn't it? It sure did. They've got beautiful background there. See, I could torch again into that background and get little tiny cells up, but I don't want to. I like how my cells look as if they're just floating. So they've got room around them to be themselves, to be an individual, rather than them all bumping into each other and then just a mass of cells and you can't even see the background. So that's what I prefer. All right. Oh, 32 minutes. I have to stop making such long videos, you guys. <laughs> All right. Um, but you guys wanted to see the, the workshop, so I just had to show you real quick. Righto, there she is in all her glory. Love it. Um, and I'll see you for the next one. I probably won't be doing a video for the next day because I have to work. So it might be a couple of days before you see a video, but because I my next day off is Wednesday. But uh, I'll see you real soon, okay? Thanks for watching. Bye for now.